Hey there, future nurses. Let's talk about the main difference between the next-gen NCLEX and the old NCLEX. I do have good news for you. The core concepts that you're expected to know for the old NCLEX still apply to the new gen NCLEX. These principles and nursing content has stayed the same for years and years. So introducing some new question types doesn't change the core principles and nursing content. So deep breaths as we walk through these changes because everything you're learning now, those core concepts still apply to this new generation NCLEX. For those of you who don't know, this next generation NCLEX will be starting April 1st, 2023. So if that applies to you, this video is for you. So what's the main difference between the next gen NCLEX and the old NCLEX? So the time allowed is staying exactly the same. You get five hours to take the exam. Now for the number of questions on the exam that are changing. So it used to be 75 to 145 questions, but now it's gonna be 85 to 150 questions. You're probably thinking, wait, it's more questions, but the same amount of time allowed. That's correct. You will need to learn time management for this exam. You will need to be able to see a case study and pick out those important cues and learn to eliminate the fluff in the scenarios. Now for the pretest items. Just like before, you will have 15 unscored pretest items. This is included within the 85 to 150 questions. You won't know which questions are the pretest or unscored questions. They appear the same as normal scored questions. What this means is you need to take every single question on your exam seriously. Don't let this pretest item thing get to your head. All right, let's look at a chart which breaks down all of the questions on the new generation NCLEX. So for starters, the old NCLEX solely consisted of standalone questions. These are typical questions like SATA, multiple choice, and hotspot questions. The next gen NCLEX still has those standalone question types. However, they're introducing more question styles. These two new standalone questions are called bow ties and trend questions. They are also introducing a new question style called case studies. Within case studies and trend questions, there are new question types. These are highlight, drag and drop, matrix and grid, drop down and extended multiple response. So like I said, the old NCLEX did not have any case studies, but this next gen NCLEX will. So each student, no matter how many questions you're shown, will get three case studies on your exam. Each case study has six questions or item types. So three case studies that have six questions each equals a total of 18 questions. Not too bad, just a small portion of your exam. Okay, let's talk about bow tie questions. For bow tie questions, you're given information about a client, maybe through nurses notes, admission notes, lab values, or vital signs. From there, you need to choose one condition the patient is most likely experiencing. So based on all those findings, what condition do you think the patient is experiencing? Then you need to choose two actions to take and two parameters to monitor. That's a quick overview of a bow tie question. Now let's walk through a trend question. This is also considered a standalone question. So for these questions, you're gonna be shown a trend in a patient. For example, you might have nurse's notes at 11.15 a.m. and then another nurse's notes at 11.40 a.m. You need to see how your patient is trending, which is why it's called a trend question. Like I said before, with trend question and case studies, you will see new question types, including the highlight, the drag and drop, the extended multiple response but I have an entire video going over each of those question types, so if you want more in-depth details on those, head over there. Now for lab values. This is a change you're probably going to like, so listen up. Lab values were not given on the old NCLEX. With this new generation NCLEX, there will be lab values given. For example, the next gen NCLEX will tell you if a value is normal, high, or low. The reason they made this change is to simulate what you will be seeing in the hospital as a nurse. So for example, in a hospital setting, the electronic system will tell you if the patient's labs are normal, high, or low. But here's the catch. You still need to know how to interpret those lab values. So for example, if the question tells you that thyroid stimulating hormone is high and thyroxine is low, you still need to be able to interpret that. 
What do these values indicate? Do they indicate hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism? In this case study, values indicate hypothyroidism. So yes, you will be told if the values are normal, high, or low, but you still need to use your nursing brain to interpret what they mean. Now for partial credit, the question everyone's asking. So the old NCLEX did not give any partial credit. It was either correct or incorrect. But the new Gen NCLEX will be giving partial credit on some questions with multiple points. The new scoring system is a little bit complicated, which is why I have an entire video covering that. But the short answer is yes, partial credit will be given on the select all that apply questions. If you want more information and practice questions on the new generation NCLEX, be sure to grab the complete NCLEX notebook. It comes with a calendar to write your NCLEX study plan, must know signs and symptoms, and NCLEX facts. It comes with new generation NCLEX practice questions, plus it comes with two note-taking templates. If you want all this for the NCLEX, be sure to check out the link in the description below. Best of luck on your NCLEX. Deep breaths and remember that core nursing content is not changing, just the way they're asking it. You got this, future nurse.